Hello welcome to part 41 of clinical physiotherapy MCQ series. Here we gon discuss day to day clinical scenario with detailed explanation. Now don't waste our time, let's move to question number 201. For a patient with a bilateral transfemoral amputation to maximize balance in a wheelchair, the rear wheels should be positioned more. Option A laterally, option B posteriorly, option C anteriorly, option D inferiorly, and the answer is option b posteriorly explanation to this answer is the center of gravity of a person with bilateral transfemoral amputations is more posterior than the center of gravity of a person with lower extremities intact setting the back wheels more posteriorly will make the patient more stable in the chair this adjustment prevents the wheelchair from tipping backward now let's move to question number 202 a geriatric patient with walking, pneumonia and a history of recent falls is receiving physical therapy for general strengthening. What part of this person's treatment is affected most by his lung condition? Option A decreased stamina or tolerance of activity. Option B inability to participate in endurance type activities. Option C diminished tidal volumes. Option D lower oxygen saturation with moderate activity. And the answer is option a decreased stamina or tolerance of activity explanation to this answer is answer a having a walking pneumonia and history of falls indicates a decreased tolerance of activity stamina will likely slow therapy the most option b this is related to number a but the patient's treatment will focus on easy endurance type activities the patient will be able to participate some Option C diminished tidal volume will be a part of the issue, but can be monitored and controlled with coaching. Option D this is related to number C, but will not be the most affected portion because it will be difficult for this patient to perform much moderate intensity activity. Now let's move to question number 203. A 67 year old patient is recovering from a left CVA resulting in severe right hemiplegia. Additionally, he has a large diabetic ulcer on his left foot with pitting edema, requiring elevation of that extremity. The most appropriate wheelchair prescription for this patient would be A. Option A hemiplegic chair. Option B lightweight active duty wheelchair. Option C one arm drive chair. Option D powered wheelchair with joystick. And the answer is Option C one arm drive chair. Explanation to this answer is, a one-arm drive wheelchair has both drive mechanisms located on one wheel. The patient can propel the wheelchair by using one hand, in this case his sound left hand, it is contraindicated in patients with cognitive or perceptual deficits. A hemiplegic chair, low seat height, allows use of both the sound hand and leg to propel the chair. The electric wheelchair with joystick might also work but is significantly more expensive, less transportable, and would require increased maintenance, an elevating leg rest is needed to complete the wheelchair prescription. Now let's move to question number 204. A manual muscle test of a patient who sustained a gunshot wound immediately superior to the elbow joint reveals specific muscle weakness from a partial median nerve injury. The physical therapy intervention for the patient should include strengthening activities for wrist flexion, forearm. Option A pronation, finger flexion, and thumb adduction. Option B pronation, finger flexion, and thumb opposition. Option C supination, finger abduction, and thumb opposition. Option D supination, finger flexion, and thumb extension. And the answer is Option B pronation, finger flexion, and thumb opposition. Explanation to this answer is, the median nerve innervates the following muscles in the forearm, a, pronator teres and quadratus, b, flexor digitum superficialis, c, flexor digitum profundus, index and middle fingers, d, thena muscles, abductor pollicis brevis, opponens pollicis, flexor pollicis brevis. Therefore, a lesion of the median nerve would affect those muscles and their accompanying actions, forearm pronation, finger flexion, and thumb opposition, thumb adduction is accomplished by the adductor pollicis, ulna nerve, finger abduction is performed by the dorsal interosse, ulna nerve, forearm supination is the action of the supinator, radial nerve, and biceps brachii, musculocutaneous nerve.
Now let's move to question number 205. A patient complains of pain in the right hip while she is ambulating. Upon examination, you notice that the patient has a significant drop of the left hip while in mid stance on the right leg. The most appropriate treatment for this impairment would be Option A Standing Hip Abduction of the Left Leg Option B Standing Hip Abduction of the Right Leg Option C Standing Flexion of the Left Leg Option D Standing Flexion of the Right Leg And the answer is Option A Standing Hip Abduction of the Left Leg Explanation to this answer is, the patient is demonstrating a Trendelberg gait with the weakness on the right hip abductors, the trick, and this is very true in the clinical world, is that while standing on the involved hip and abducting the opposite, you are loading the right hip, closed chain, more than the left hip, open chain, thus you are more effective at strengthening the right hip abductors by using the closed chain exercise. B. Good. But this open chain activity for the right hip abductors is not as appropriate as a closed chain activity. C. Not directly related to the impairment. D. Same as. C. So, that's all for today. If you have any doubts please comment below. I think you have learned something valuable today. See you on the next part. That's part. 42. See you till then. Bye bye.